Welcome everyone to a unintended part two of this CUDA worksheet tutorial on the law of cosines. We already talked about some easier forms with uh, number one and number two when we're looking for sides. It's when we get into angles that it's a little more tricky. So we're gonna talk about how do we do that in just a moment. But first, I'm doing a part two because I made one tiny mistake with, I forgot a one in front of the 143. I took the cosine of 43 degrees instead of 143 on my calculator and it messed up literally everything. So let's start from scratch. Here's problem number eight. Find measure of angle B. Couple different ways to do this. I'm gonna try to break it down into the best ways possible. Hang in there with me and hopefully we can work something out. Okay, so first let's remember our law of cosines. Let me grab it up here, copy paste it. Okay, we're gonna be using this for number eight. Reference it right there, okay. We already have some of these things. We already have, uh, well, we're trying to find measure of angle B. So the problem is, um, if we're looking for measure of angle B, we also need an, another side. So you can't just have two unknowns. For this to work, for this formula to work, you have to have one, two, three sides if you're looking for that missing angle. So we're missing an angle, we don't have three sides, that's a problem. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to use the law of cosines to find that missing side, and we're gonna call that A. That has to be our first step if we're gonna try to have any success looking for angle B. So let's go ahead and show that how that works. Well, we have A squared, we know that is what we're working with. We're gonna put B squared, B squared we'll call 17 squared plus 22 squared is C, minus two times B, which is 17 again, times, great movie, times 22, times uh, cosine of A, which is 143. So see here, I have everything um, given except for one measurement, okay? So I, I wouldn't be able to do this if I was looking for cosine of B because I wouldn't have the sides. All right, now, Let's go ahead and simplify. This is where you have to be super careful. As you saw, I had a ton of messed up work because I messed up one tiny detail. So very important um, that you are very careful with uh, your steps. So I'm gonna just go 17 squared plus 22 squared. I'm gonna do that on my calculator. I'm gonna write this down. So I did um, these two added together. Okay, that was my first step, and I got, I'm gonna go to this color. I like this palette a lot more. 773, okay, that equals A squared. Minus, I'm gonna multiply two times 17 times 22. This is where I messed up last time, minus 748. Where I messed up was cosine of 143. Cosine of 143, okay, yes. Now I'm in business. I get a negative 0 0.7986. Big difference here. All right, now what I need to do is I need to multiply that. I'm just leaving it stored in my calculator times 748. Um, and I get negative 597.37. So I'm gonna be subtracting a negative from 773. That means I'm gonna be adding it to 773. When I do that, I get 1,370.37 about. Okay, I'm rounding here, but when I'm actually typing it in my calculator, I'm not rounding, just for the record. Don't be like, oh, you wrote something different and then that's not what it was. I I'm aware, okay, so take the square root. So I'm gonna take the square root of what's already stored on my calculator and I get A equals 37.01. We're already doing better than last time. I'm feeling much better about myself. Sometimes it, got, it just got me down, you know? 37.01, that's rounded. I think the instructions are around to the nearest tenth, so this would be technically 37.0. 37.0. All right, cool. Now, what I'm doing is I need to solve for B. So if I wanna use the law of cosines for this, let me show you how that works. Law of cosines for this. Well, what I, what I like to do is if you wanna um, use this formula, that's fine, what I do is I just relabel it. So I would call this A instead. Okay, so when, I'll show you how I do this. What I like to do is I just like to relabel it. Some people don't like to do this because they'll, they'll mess up. Um, but I don't like to memorize the other formula. The other formula would be this. 
let me just show you real quick. The other formula would be b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac times cosine of b. So if you want, just use that because it's already labeled as b. But if you don't want to memorize, oh my gosh, another formula to memorize, then just relabel everything and just use this as a. And then we can call this whatever. We can call this b and we can call this c. So now that I'm looking for, I'm looking for a is the moral of the story. I'm looking for a. I'm looking for cosine of a because that's our missing angle. And then I actually forgot to write that this is now a. Okay, and you just change it when you're done. That's that's what I would do. If you want, just go ahead and use this formula right here. Um, and I think I'm going to call it, I'm just going to, for the sake of not screwing up my viewers and making them feel bad about themselves, I'm going to go ahead and use this formula right here. So b squared is 17 squared equals a squared which is 37 squared plus c squared, which is 22 squared. Okay, some big numbers up in here. Minus two times 37 times 22 times cosine of b. There's our guy right there. That's who we're trying to find. So it's, it's, it's a process trying to find him. Okay, um, but it's not too bad. It could be worse. There's, there's worse things in life. Switch to this color, we're gonna have 17 squared on the left, and that's 289. 37 squared is, whoof, big number, plus 22 squared. I'm just gonna go ahead and add those two together right here, and that gives me 1853 minus two times 37 times 22. That gives me minus 1628 times cosine of B. Again, B is what I'm looking for, my angle. What do I do from here? Well, if I'm trying to solve for B, I need to get this stuff over to the other side. So first I need to subtract 1800 from both sides. 289 minus 1853. Oops, 289 minus 1853. I accidentally typed two twos in there. I get negative 1,564 equals negative 1628 times cosine of b. Again, I'm looking for the angle. So now I need to divide by negative 1628 to both sides. Negative 1628. 1628 negative, and I get 0 0.9606 equals cosine of b. Well, how do I get b by itself? If I'm gonna get b by itself, what I have to do is I have to take the inverse cosine of both sides, inverse cosine of both sides. So b is gonna be equal to the inverse cosine of 0 0.96 dot dot dot. I'm just gonna type that in my calculator. I don't like rounding. If possible, cos inverse cosine, type that in, enter, and I get, um, oops, I just took the inverse cosine, and this will give me angle b is equal to 16.11 degrees. Okay, so I got angle B, 16.11 degrees. That's very cool. I got that answer. Now, I use the law of cosines, but what you can do here is you can actually use the law of sines once you find all three sides and you have an opposite angle. So how does that work? Well, let me show you real quick, just so you don't have to waste your time with law of cosines twice, which is a bear. Let's say we didn't know this was 16.11. What I'm gonna do is I have an angle and it's opposite side, and then I have an opposite side, but it's missing its angle. So I'm gonna use those two things for the law of sines. Let me show you how that looks. First, we're gonna say sine of A over A is gonna be equal to sine of B over B. I know the sine of A, that's 143, or sine of 143. I know angle A, I should, I should say, equals over 37 is equal to sine of B. That's what I don't know, okay? Remember, I don't know B and then that's over 17. So from here, what I do is I cross multiply, boom, boom. So I have 17 times sine of 143, I'm not gonna do that yet, equals 37 times sine B. I'm gonna divide both sides by 37 to get B by itself, or get in the process of getting B by itself, times sine 143. Okay, and then I get a decimal divided by 37, okay, and then I get about 0.2, 765 equals sine of B. We have to do the same thing here. So we're gonna take the inverse cosine 
sorry, inverse sine. I don't know why I said cosine. We're going to take the inverse sine of both sides. And we're going to get angle B by itself. And now we just have to type inverse sine there of that. And guess what we get? We get 16.1 rounded. It's a little bit different with the rounding, okay? So both of these give you a little bit different. I got 16.11 there. I got 16.10 here for angle B. But basically, it's the same thing after you round, okay? So law of sines, in my opinion, is a lot less work than all of this. That is a lot of typing on the calculator where this is far less for law of sines. Make law of sines your buddy. Hopefully, this was helpful. <laughs> hope you saw and appreciate how much work I went into and then I made a mistake, but that's how it goes sometimes. You put in a lot of work, you don't see the outcome. But anyway, that's how it goes sometimes. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to tune in next time. Uh, if you have any questions on any of this, make sure to ask in the comments section below. And thank you so much for watching.